And finally, detached houses. Now, detached houses are great if you're looking at longer term plans with that property. Maybe you've got lots of land to play with and you maybe want to consider extending or you maybe want to consider um, getting planning permission in the land to build new houses. They also attract a particular type of tenant profile, usually a higher um, cost per month. So people that have a, a much higher uh, rental, uh, sorry, wage and income that can afford to pay slightly higher values would usually gravitate towards those detached type houses for a bit more privacy. So you do have some, um, some benefits and some nuances when it comes to detached houses that some people prefer and some people favor. Some of the downsides though with attached houses is the asset cost is, is usually the highest for that kind of given area. It's gonna be higher than an apartment or a terrace or a semi-detached house to acquire. Because of that, your rental yields are likely to be lower. Um, and because of that, the ability to raise finance or needing to put more money into the property um, is gonna be kind of trickier for finance and, and usually needing more money to, to kind of acquire. So you need to weigh up these variables when it comes to considering if a detached property is gonna be the right one for your kind of buy to that portfolio. But if you are considering a longer term play, um, there are opportunities out there with detached houses where you can maybe consider this potential of adding some sort of value. And that's personally the reason why we've um, considered detached houses before rather than just a mainstream uh, rental play rather than just saying oh it's a fantastic property because it's attached and it's kind of set a, set away from from other properties a bit more private maybe a slightly different tenant profile um, but the flip side of that as we said is, is kind of typically lower rental yields and you usually get um, yeah a different type of uh, benefit let's say from, from those properties than you would do from a, a terrace or a semi uh, or an apartment and also asset values it's good to look at the data for your location because each location is different and we'll, we'll touch on in the next video in terms of where to get that data and what to look for but it's not as simple as detached houses go up in value more than semi-detached um, or terraces or apartments it is very location dependent so we've seen areas where detached houses in terms of the asset cost has rocketed compared to other locations maybe because it's it's really exclusive um, it's a really sought after area and there's just not much housing stock, there's just not much properties and even in the ones that are available there's not many detached houses so it, they're really sought after. Supply and demand makes the prices really rocket and um, so if it's a capital growth play having a look at those nuanced data sets within your area may mean that you start to consider detached houses as an option. Um, but likewise, in other areas where there's maybe a, a, a plethora of detached properties, um, they've maybe overbuilt and there's not many larger families in that area or the demand is slightly down, what we tend to find is that the semi-detached houses uh, month on month to have and year on year have slightly better growth um, and slightly better growth prospects as well than maybe the detached housing stock. So what you're paying as a premium for a detached, you might not get back in terms of the actual benefits of, of longer term kind of growth. So digging into those data sets for your area because it is absolutely location specific and it's going to be very important. It will give you um, much more insight into the potential of detached properties for that location. Hope that helps.